You know that thing when you're driving down a country road, singing along to John Denver, because you're kind of obvious like that, when all of a sudden, a big bug explodes across your windshield? That was a big one. Let's check it out. Oh, God! <laughs> it happens. You go for a drive, you get bug splats on your car. What do we got there? It's usually an annoyance. It's so gross. <laughs> but here we're collecting splats intentionally. Partly because we're doing an absurd and gross experiment in ecology, and partly because windshields might be a window into something mysterious and disturbing in the insect world. This bug splat is like, it goes all the way up here. It could be a grasshopper. Ooh. We actually got into insect splats because of an app. It's called That Gunk on Your Car, and it's the brainchild of this guy. Mark Hostetler, a professor in the Department of Wildlife Ecology and Conservation at the University of Florida. Mark studies how urban areas affect biodiversity. He's also looking for ways to get non-scientists thinking about bugs. And a few years back, at a gas station in Florida, he found a new way to do that. This guy pulled up next to me covered in insect splats, a lot of love bugs, you know, and he just kind of exasperated and looked at me and goes, what, what, is, what, what is this anyway? And he asked the right person. Somehow this compelled Mark to catalog all the splats he could find and match the splat to the bug that produced it. He collected his findings and wrote a book with very detailed instructions for identifying splats. This is a, a nice creamy one with some blood in it. Weird as it is, the project took off. Mark won the Ig Nobel Prize, which is sort of a joke Nobel for the strange and gross, or more formally, for research that cannot or should not be reproduced. Maybe a dubious honor, but it got him onto The Tonight Show. How many times you look at the windshield and say, I would love to know what that is smashed against my windshield. And I say, so is there anybody up to this point there was no one that could tell you? This man can tell you. Professor Mark Hostetler is here. He and earlier this year, Mark's son, Jam, adapted the book into an app. I'm a computer science student at the University of Florida. Truly, the family went all in on splats. I think I'm the only splatologist in the world right now. And we decided to try some amateur splatology ourselves. Step one was to meet up in rural Texas. Lots of bugs in rural Texas. Step two, turn our rental car into a bug collection mobile. The catch was that not all bugs just smush on the front of the car. Some ricochet up and over the roof. So Mark suggested we build a little contraption he calls a carcass catcher. Take a heavy metal wire and loop it in through the car door here and here. And then there's a bottom wire and then you put a uh, aluminum screen there and that screen kind of wraps around the top and the bottom and forms like a little trough with a net. And we can just run some twine down to the windshield wipers. And we drive it around for a little while and we see if it stays on. And finally, step three, drive. This whole setup, not the most rigorous science. All of the locals have a lot of opinions about where we can find the most bugs. But it did give us a random sampling of all the flying insects in the area. We took backcountry roads between Austin and Houston, and along the way, we smushed bugs. Less watery. We checked the carcass catcher. It's like a beetle or something. And we consulted the app. Cream, uh, elongated, mid-sized. Love bugs. Love bugs. The weirdest data point might be the shape of the splats. Mark says that basically comes down to physics. So if, if you're a hard, had a hard shell, like to think of a, a beetle, it would hit and roll right off. But the softer abdomens like lepidopterans, you know, butterflies and moths, they would hit, stick, and the wings and the, and the acceleration of the air going up the windshield would actually spread them up the, the windshield and it all kind of uh, gives you uh, a different splat. The carcass catcher got us some good samples too. Some kind of fly, a honeybee, and love bugs. Lots and lots of love bugs. It was love bug season in the south. These ones are Oh god, there's one flying by yeah, me right now. Yeah, these ones are connected. But all in, we didn't get nearly as many splats as we thought. It was weird. 
And we started to wonder if it was because of this other thing we'd read about, a mystery in insect circles that's actually called the windshield phenomenon. What you're referring to is that this idea that um, people thought, well, I used to get a lot more insect splats on my windshield uh, about 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago. And I'm not getting as much nowadays. It's easy to ignore the millions and millions of insects all around you. Often you only notice the annoying ones, the bugs that sting you, eat your food, or splat on your car. But anecdotally, there's a feeling that bug splats just aren't as much of a thing these days. Mark's noticed this himself. Thinking about traveling across country 20 years ago, I just noticed using those um, bug removers at the gas station a lot more than I do nowadays. No one's quite sure, but there's just enough smattering of evidence out there that makes people think, you know, we should be really looking at this. The phenomenon gets creepier when you consider all the studies that point to real trouble for insects. Around the world, insects face threats like habitat loss, climate change, pesticides, and invasive species. A couple recent studies put numbers to the problem. One paper looking at nature preserves in Germany found a 75% decline in all flying insects since the 90s. And earlier this year, a big meta-study of insect research warned that 40% of all insect species could go extinct within a few decades. Some news outlets called it an insect apocalypse. And we wondered if we might have seen evidence of that. Back in the office, we cataloged our samples. And we asked Mark about the existential threat to insects. He's concerned, but he also thinks it's really hard to paint a broad picture about the health of all insects everywhere. It's been hard enough to figure out why honeybees alone have been struggling. It took years and years and years and years of research to really say, oh, it's probably pesticides and there's probably some habitat going on. And, it's, you know, that was focused concentration. We're talking about hundreds, thousands, millions of different species of insects across the world. For that reason, there's been pushback to the insect apocalypse narrative. Critics argue that we don't know nearly enough to say one thing or another about all insects. There are roughly one million identified insect species in the world, but scientists don't have a clue how many species are really out there. It could be a couple million, it could be 30 million. And really, the windshield phenomenon just isn't studied enough either. Our bug splats and collections make for interesting anecdotes, but without a measured baseline, it's not evidence of anything. It's not science. But Mark says it could be. If someone really got serious about driving around with a carcass catcher, they could put the windshield phenomenon to the test. You could, on a general level, say, hey, you know, if you get many, this many splats and do the same route year after year after year, you could get at least a, a monitoring uh, protocol going that could give you some good scientific results. Mark says that would come down to funding, and he's not holding his breath. For now, he's content to hold court as the world's foremost splatologist. You want to talk about unusual splats? Sure. How, how weird does it get? So um, you get a, a, a number of different splats, but you can, um, some of the characteristics, you can tell in most cases the, the sex of the insect by the splat alone. Because... Most species, uh, this is all our hard work. Still waiting for this sucker. Uh. Like and subscribe. <laughs>